guys, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna do a little Q&A for you. So I haven't done one of these in a really long time. I wanted you guys to ask me some pretty good questions, not the same like basic questions in every Q&A um, on my community tab on my channel. So I have that pulled up right now and I'm just gonna read the questions right off of here. There's 13 questions, but I think, um, I think some of them are repeat. So I'm just gonna read them right off of here. Start with the first one is from Day by Day Vlogs and they ask, standpoint on the horse race industry, what is your favorite grooming product slash favorite horse product? Okay, so the racing interest industry, I've thought about this one before and honestly, I'm not like a big fan of it. I mean, I don't really think most people are unless you're in the racing industry. I don't really, um, I don't know. I don't resonate with it. I don't resonate with the practices, a lot of the practices that go on in the racing industry. But the way I think about it is the racing industry isn't any different than any other part of the equine industry um, when it comes to making money off of horses. Pretty shitty things that go on in the racing part of the horse industry, but there's also really crappy things that go on in the English um how do I want to put it? Like the English like section. I don't know. I'm trying to think of it in like different parts of the equine industry, but there's crappy things that go on in barrel racing in those big, huge high level barrel racers. The same goes for Western pleasure. I know people that, um, really high up in the show business that treat their horses probably just as bad as people who own racehorses. I mean, I think what I notice in different parts of the horse industry is that there's the same patterns of things that I don't like that go on all throughout the industry. It's not just one specific sport. It's not just racing or it's not just Western pleasure. It's not just jumping people. It's, and I'm not, I'm not like putting a blanket over everybody. I'm sure there's good people that treat their racehorses really well and that give them a good life and that really do care about them and aren't just all about the money. Just like I'm sure there's tons of Western pleasure people that are the same way, but there's also a lot of bad people in those, um, in those sports and throughout the whole industry. And there's certain things that I don't like about the horse racing, um, world, but they're the same things that happen in the other big high level thing, like high level sports in horses. So, I mean, I could list everything I don't like about the horse racing industry, but it's going to be the same list for um, high level um, Western pleasure and barrel racers. And I mean, it's, it's just a pattern with horses. It's not a pattern via the sport. Favorite grooming product or horse product? Oh, my little ass hackamore probably. They're my Little S Hackamore or my um, Professional Choice Saddle Pad because both of those I use so much and I really like my Little S Hackamore because it's just very giving. It's very light. Um, it has a, it has a little bit of shank to it, but it's not so harsh that like I just I feel safe using a Little S Hackamore on any horse, whether it be a pretty green horse or a really experienced one. I just feel like it's so versatile and. That would have to be my favorite thing. It's always my go-to thing. What are your views on blanketing horses? Asks Jessica Gray. So, um, like, I don't think it's a bad thing if you want to blanket your horse. Do what you want. They're your horses, whatever. I don't blanket mine. Um, I've had soccer and sugar for going on, like, 11 years now, and I've never once blanketed them. Not one time. And, I mean, I live in Iowa where it gets to, like, negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit here. So, it gets really damn cold. And I, they've always been fine. I've never had either of them get sick. Horses don't get cold. I, I know a lot of people think that, like, um, if you don't blanket your horse. Or, like, the saying that if you need a coat, your horse needs a coat also. That is the stupidest thing. That is the dumbest thing you can say to me. I'm like... Let's take it back a minute because horses were, you know, come from wild animals. We have domesticated them. 
but horses share so many of the same traits as wild horses do and one of those things is their coat is made for the weather i mean that's why they grow a winter coat and actually um a long time ago somebody on facebook i was kind of arguing with them a little bit about blanketing and they're like well my horse needs a blanket because he's shaved and i was like well then yeah because you shaved all his hair off why do you think they grow winter hair um i also um think that blanketing is one of the causes for really poor coat qualities i mean i know some people argue that they blanket their horse because their horse just has a really sad coat and its coat's not very thick and it gets cold but honestly, the best way to fix that is to let your horse's coat grow out. I mean, let it thicken. Let it naturally um, build up, you know? And also blanketing from a really young age and blanketing a horse their whole life can cause that. So, I don't know. I don't blanket my horses. I don't think it's necessary. I'm not going to spend a few hundred dollars on every blanket that my horse needs. I just think that's a ridiculous amount of money and... I just don't feel like it's necessary and I've never needed them, so I'm not going to start needing them, so I don't use them. Never have. Abby, I'm going to try and say this right, Cacheris, but maybe it's Cacheris or Cacheris, anyways, asked, how many acres of pasture a horse needs? Um, I like to say an acre or an acre and a half per horse. Um, I think typically it's an acre, but like, I feel like one horse on one acre will just eat the pasture totally down to like really dull, short grass and it's not very good quality. So I like to say like an acre and a half per horse, um, f just like for the sake of the grass. <laughs> Your views. Oh, we love TM123, um, wants my views on show jumping. And, um, I think this is a good one because I don't know if I've ever really talked about how I feel about jumping horses. Um, if you guys have watched my channel for a long time, um, you might, I feel like I videoed it a long time ago. I've jumped my horses. I've jumped my paint mare sugar and I used to do it just for fun out in the pasture. Nothing really big, just over like hay bales and like small stuff. And I don't have a problem with jumping to an extent, I feel like when you get, you know, up into the really big shows and the really um, high level stuff, like it gets to the point where it's like ridiculous. I mean, those like walls that they have to jump and like five foot fences, like that's just, that to me is caring more about the sport than the horses. And like, I don't, I, that crosses a line for me. And I don't think horses are made to do that. I don't think that's good for their joints. That's not good for their legs. I don't feel like if, I don't feel like if, um, if I have to keep pumping supplements into my horse and keep getting their stifles injected and this, all this stuff that people do, I feel like if you're constantly doing that, then there's something you shouldn't be doing with your horse. Like, if I have to constantly, like, maintenance my horse so that it doesn't fall apart and have all these problems, I probably shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I just don't feel like horses are made for that. I feel like it causes problems. And, I mean, small jumps, you know, like, I feel like three feet and under, like, that type of height. Um, you know, I don't have an exact height, but, like, around three feet-ish is probably enough for me. I feel like that's high enough. I don't feel like horses need to be jumping the five foot, like, huge, triple wide jumps. Like, that's just, no, horses were not designed for that. Okay. Ivory Six Killer um, asks, what is your favorite thing about riding and owning horses? Everything. Um, what is my favorite thing? I would say my favorite thing about why I keep doing this and why I've always kept doing it is how much horses teach me on a daily basis. Like, I mean, I've had my horses for 11 years now, but 
never have my horses stopped teaching me. I mean, even the more that I work with other horses, I still continue to learn about my horses. I mean, even the more I work with clients' horses, like every single horse is different. And every single horse will give you new experiences. Every single ride, every single year that I have my horses, I'm constantly learning new things about horses, new things about um, horses' instincts and their behavior and different ways to train and um, going on new adventures on different trail rides to going to new parks and um, trying different things. Like this year, I got to go to more shows and I got to try different stuff with my horses. I got another project horse and I got to take her to one show and I when I went to pick her up it took us an hour and a half to get her into the trailer. I've never had to experience that before and Sarah has taught me a lot about older horses and refreshing and restarting horses and I'm sure if I ever have to break out a two-year-old they'll teach me tons about breaking out two-year-olds compared to breaking out 15-year-olds. So there's just so much to learn and they never stop. They never stop teaching you different things. It's never, it's never a dull, it's never a dull thing to have horses or to ride horses. You're always gonna be doing something. You're always gonna be figuring things out. People are asking me about Shelby Dennis and I don't know who that is, but maybe I should look into it. <laughs> I don't watch YouTube that much because I'm just so busy with my life so I don't know what that's about let me know down below what that is about Aubrey McManus asks what is your least favorite event I would probably have to say rodeo events and I'm not saying all of them I'm trying to think oh probably definitely uh, either bronc riding or um, what is the calf roping. I just, every time I watch that, I just cringe at, God, I just, I'm trying to watch what I say so I don't like blow up the comment section and controversy, but I just always cringe at the equipment that's used. I mean, bronc riding is cringy for any of us equestrians, but I don't know, just like calf roping, I'm, I just, I don't, think it's okay what they do to the calves but I also just every time I watch it it seems like such big nasty equipment that they use on the horses and that's how the horses are broke out from the beginning I get that so that's all that they know but it's like such big bits and tie downs and huge spurs and like just the cowboy attitude I don't know just usually rodeo events are just very cringy to me and I don't like to watch them she also asks, who in the horse world do you look up to? Honestly, I was not raised or brought up in the horse world in the showing aspect. I never showed when I was younger. So, like, I don't really know any, like, um, champion horseback riders or anything like that. I look up to um, Rick Gore a lot just because he taught me a ton about horses and horse behavior and um, thinking like a horse and the aspect of a horse but I would say he would probably be the only one because I don't really know a lot of big wig trainers or anything um, or or writers barrel racing good or bad uh, both I think it depends how you do it just like everything else I mean I barrel race um, and it, I do it very differently than a lot of the other people that come to these shows do. And I don't care about winning. It would be great, and I like to win, but, like, it's not my main priority. I don't care that much about it. I care more about, um, my horse doing the pattern well, in tune with me, um, listening to me, and not being in such a rush that she's all over the place. Um, and I care more about that than... Um, then, you know, winning the race and whatever, but I feel like a lot of barrel racers lose touch with that. That's when things just, just become a problem and make it a worse experience for the horse. Ooh, this is
This is an interesting one. Clara Fleming asks, what are the breeds and temperaments of your horses? Um, and I don't talk about my horses as much as I like to um, on camera. So Soccer is actually, he's registered um, American Paint Horse Association, but he's just, I just call him Quarter Horse because paints are Quarter Horses in my opinion. Um, I guess not really opinion, it's more of a fact, but a Quarter Horse, full bred Quarter Horse. Um, and he, his temperament is mellow, but not very trusting. Um, he's mellow, not very trusting, and very studly. Sugar is sweet. Um, she's sweet, easygoing, and a little bit marish. BB is uh, a little more high strung, but she's not confident. Um, so, what what was I at? Um, higher strung, impatient, adventurous, but not confident. Let's say Sarah. Gosh, she, I mean, her temperament is changing, so right now I want to say Sarah is willing, sweet, but um, not totally focused. Isabella Perro um, says, I race my OTTB. What do you think about that? Awesome. Actually, I know a lot of people that race thoroughbreds, so. Shiny asks about your horses age height breed and personality okay so i just talked about their personalities um soccer is 15 2 and he is 17 years old um quarter horse oh i forgot to talk about their breeds also um bb is 14 2 and we definitely think that she's a quarter horse if not a quarter horse mix um and she is about 12. 12 or 13. Um, and sugar is just a total mutt. We have no idea what sugar is. I'm going to guess, I don't know, I feel like she might be a quarter pony mix. Like, I feel like maybe one of her parents was a quarter pony and a, and a quarter horse, like a quarter horse paint. Maybe. But we, we really don't know. She honestly doesn't look like anything. And... She is about 14 hands, and she, uh, oh, she's, I think, 12 also. Or no. No, she's not. She's older than BB. So she's 13 or 14. And Sarah, I want to say, is probably 13, 3, maybe 14 hands. And she is about 15. And she is 3 quarters halflinger one quarter pony and jessica gray asks thoughts on clipping a horse stalls or anything controversial it makes for a good video <laughs> i don't like clipping horses i just think it's not necessary and i don't understand why people even do it other than to look cool and you know i know there's certain ways like you do it with the saddle and whatever but i just don't feel like it's necessary especially if for schooling like why does your horse have to have short hair on half of its body for schooling? And maybe there is a valid reason that I just don't know of because I don't do English. But I'm, I don't know. I know some people that do it and I'm just like, why? Why? Like you're just making it harder for your horse to regulate its body temperature just to look cool. You guys already know if you watch my channel that I don't like uh, stalling horses full times. I think stalls are useful tools to have. Um, if you need to just bring a horse in overnight or, um, if you need a feed to feed a horse separately from the other horses or have like a sick or injured horse or whatever to have a stall or two, but like stalling a horse full time, I don't even need to talk about it. Cause you guys probably already know how I feel about it. Okay, and the last question is also from Jessica Gray. Um, also your comments or reviews of Rick Gore and his thoughts. Do you agree with most of what he says? Pretty much all of it. Um, I think sometimes he harps on women a little too much and I'm just like, okay, take it back a minute, Rick. We, we, come back. 
Um, and I think he harps on things being pink a little too much. I don't think there's anything wrong with having pink stuff as long as it works. Um, but yeah, I pretty much learned a, a ton from Rick. So I have the utmost respect for him and what he does for horses. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was probably a bit long, but I like sitting down and chit chatting with you guys. Um, let me know if there's anything else you guys are wondering down below in the comments and I will, you know, I'll be talking to you guys down there. Um, don't forget to check out my Etsy shop down below if you're needing any Christmas gift ideas or anything like that. Use code CHRISTMAS for 10% off until like after Christmas or something. I don't remember what day it is. And yeah, let me know what else you guys want to see down below and I'll see you guys later. Bye!